Greetings. Greetings, Max here. I am a Quen. A Quen. Yes. Welcome. Um, so, uh, what, what kind of elemental are you? I work with water. Uh huh. And what's your, uh, what's, what are your interests and uh, passions? My interests and passions are to keep the plant and animal life alive and thriving in the water and to keep the water clear and clean for the earth, for Gaia, for the oxidation of the water as well, keeping it flowing properly, keeping it in its proper dimension and understanding that it must stay in uh, purity as much as possible to help those use it wisely so that it is in abundance for the future. Uh, yes, uh-huh. Um, there are many passions that I have and that I share with all those that work with water around me. Uh-huh. My associate so, Akin is also here. We work excellent. in pairs because water is a pair of molecules. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh. Um, what the... Uh, Tell me a little bit more about yourself. What, what, what's your nature? What's, uh, how can we relate to you? I am in the dimension of Earth, but not able to be seen by the Earth dimension. But I move about in the water like a fish would move, except that I can come out of the water for extended periods of time as well to actually test the waters without being in them. There are places that I must go where the water is polluted and must check it for different chemicals and uh, let humans know where these places are through different means of earth communication. Um. Are, are you talking to ever to humans? Not, not directly, but they can get my messages through some of the flavors in the water, some of the things that they see, some of the things that I let them see, and sometimes through chemical testing. Uh, what is your relation with space and time? I am part of space and time because water is within space and time. Therefore, I have to work within that parameter. Um, are you localized in one place or can you delocalize to lots of other places? Do you, do you bilocate? Can you be in many places at once? I can bilocate if necessary. Usually... We, myself and Akin try to stay together in this area, but we have been to the Pacific Ocean's de depths, and we have been to the um, Gulf of Mexico as well for some interesting informations. Uh -huh. How does the emotion relate to water? human emotions? It depends on the, uh, the particular human that is expressing the emotion. Sometimes water is intention for to collect emotions in some ways. Tears from the eyes are emotions of joy or sadness or relief or many different things, and so they can relate to the water as well. 
When you uh, cast but, your emotions on the water, we do feel them, but we can dissipate some emotions if they are negative and cause harm to the plant or animal life thereof. Uh, there are some shamans which work uh, specifically through, through blood. I wonder if he can do healing through blood. Yes. Uh, do you actually do it? Only when it is asked of us by higher powers. It is not part of our regular uh, job description, if you will, to be a part of that kind of thing because it does take a lot of energy. But we will do it if it is necessary and if we, ha if we are asked to do it by the appropriate peoples. Uh -huh. Who are your supervisors? There are many. But we work together as a community for the most part. But yes, there has to be a supervisor. And that is usually a fairy that is in charge of a great deal of land and will be able to let us all know the interactions between the land, the water, the trees, the animals, and plants. And so we can get a larger picture of how to use what is available to us. Uh, do you have a, a territory which you work on? Yes. Our how big it is? Is Mo California, Oregon, Washington, and some parts of Canada. Uh, are you working on land or, or the ocean? I work on land waters and ocean waters at least five miles out. Uh, do you deal with clouds and rains? Yes, of course. Uh, what do you do with them? We, we analyze clouds and the kind of rain that falls. Sometimes it is necessary for us to um, help the clouds not produce rain so they get to the right areas, but that is not always possible because of different powers that are working with us. Everything is relative, as you understand, so we must work within the natural means of the Earth's parameters. But do you actually... Uh invite clouds and invite rain is, I, yes. is it in your capacity we have been able to do so <coughs> when conditions are correct uh-huh and how do you do this is it uh what's your way of doing it what's the method where the method is that we collect ourselves together and do the the ancient rituals for rain or for our for the different things that we can conjure. Is it uh, being in a circle around the fire? It depends on the ritual. Sometimes we do not have to be in a circle, but we must dance or move in certain directions so that the energies are ignited to move in certain ways. We can control wind to a point. We can control rain to a point. We can control snow to a point where that is necessary. But, and we can also control um, the movement of seeds and pods to a certain extent as well. There is many different things that we can um, move around if you wish. What's your physical appearance? I look a little like a human with a little bit of fish-like qualities. 
but I am usually about three feet long, and I usually am two-legged, but with great fins on the feet, but they're also good for walking. Not fins, I would not call them fins. Webs. But they're webs, feet, if you will. And I do have some fins on the body that help with uh, moving through the water. And I have two arms, but as I move them to the sides, they can also fit into the body so that it makes it easier to move through the water. Right. Um... So how big are you? Do you have a sight? Do I have sight? Size. I cannot see you anymore. But yeah, I, I, I turn off my video. But do you have sides? Sides. No, no. Uh, how big are you? I'm three feet long. Oh. Do you look any 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 anything like a human or an animal? Yes, I just told you that. So you have two eyes and... Uh, yes, I look somewhat human. I have arms and legs, but they can come together very closely and the arms can fit into the sides of the body for greater movement in the water. Wow. So did any humans uh, see you? No humans can see us. We are in our own place it is between the dimensions of earth and fourth dimension but it is still in a place where we can be uh, we present with the work that we need to do uh-huh and uh, are you being born are you evolving or you've been created we are created and who is creating you? God creates us for the planet that we work on. You see, an elemental must fit into the planet that he is or she is made for. So each planet has their elementals made for them so that they know exactly how to use and work in their particular elements. If we were born, we may not fully understand the elements as well, but if we are created knowing the elements, then we are fully capable of handling the job. What are your numbers? How many of you are there? Depending on the area, there can be as many as a thousand in an area but as few as 20 in an area. And that area might be um, very large, but it may not be very inhabited. <coughs> Siberia has large areas where there's only 20 or 30 elementals that work there, but are very efficient because they have just enough to do to keep them always busy. Right. Uh huh. <coughs> so, bless you. What what are what are the functions again? Like what 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 is that you actually do? We help keep the water clean. We help make sure that the animals and plants are taken care of. We make sure that the flow is proper. We do many things. We speak to the animals so that we can build dams with them and also uh, break down uh, blockages in the water if necessary. We also make sure that humans know what is necessary to be done with the water. We point out the problems to them in one way or another. There are some areas that they ignore there is not much we can do about that. We clean as much of it as we can naturally, but there are those elements and chemicals 
that we cannot clean up naturally, and so we need human help to do that. But we, as you know, we are we are able to work with all natural elements, all natural materials. But if there are materials there that are man-made that we are not uh, used to, sometimes it is difficult for us to work with them. There have been times we have been able to get rid of them or dissolve them because of what they are, but man has to help with his own environment in some ways. We are not responsible for his waste, but we are responsible for keeping natural cleanliness. All right. Uh, what uh, if 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 um, what what specifically would you like humans to do? Like first main um, changes you would like us to do? Well, first of all, there are too many dangerous power plants on your planet. The radiation will destroy the Earth eventually if you allow it. The half time of radiation in the water is destroying plants and animals always. Fortunately, there are some aliens that are helping with resolving some of the problems that are happening over near the Japanese borders in the water. The Claire's and the Yugil and sometimes Grick Fickner, however you pronounce that, is helping clear some of the radiation away from those areas. But there have been many fatalities and changes in the environment, the ocean environment in those areas. I see. So radioactivity is the main, main trouble. Right now, that is what I see. We go there every now and then just to help them. They're extremely busy in that area, and God has created a few more elementals for that area so that they may try to work as much as possible to remove the radiation. He has taught us how to break it down a little, but there are those aliens and humans that are also working to get rid of this problem. We are learning from them what to do. Uh-huh. I see. Um, there are other places where just filth and chemicals are poured into the waters and streams, which also affect the lifestyle of the fish and the plants. Many cannot adapt to these changes and will die off, or at least in the areas around those waste dumps. We see that this is a very bad problem on many of the rivers. Uh-huh. Which geographic areas of the, of the planet are most critical? There is a great problems in China and Japan. There is great problems in some portions of the United States. But most areas with great industries that have waste, will, you will find some problems in those areas. Australia has a few places like this, Europe, but China and Japan are very bad at these things. There is lots of smog and waste. Uh huh. Um, which uh, switching to the next topic? Which of the um, how big are the consciousnesses of the water? Does is it right that the ocean has one consciousness, or is it uh, different parts of the ocean have different? independent consciousnesses? It is interlocking consciousness. There is more than one consciousness, but it is interlocked together so that as one consciousness is aware, it sends that 
thought process all through the oceans. Uh huh. Uh, and um, is it is it that every river has its own mind, or how does it work? The rivers are slightly different. The w the consciousness of the richer rivers comes from the source of the river, and and stretches down the length of the river. It becomes conscious of its length and width and depth. So therefore, the consciousness is at the source. All right. Um, how about the life forms? Which life forms are uh, most in, uh, conscious in, in, in the ocean? Dolphins are the most conscious of the life forms in the ocean, other than the aliens that live there on the ocean floor very deep. Uh, but I don't think the dolphins are uh, in charge of the ocean. They kind of are independent. No. Are, are there like uh, some, um, some some consciousness that uh, actually controls and uh, unifies the work of the ocean. What would be doing that? The, as I said, the ocean is a collective consciousness and rules itself in many ways. It knows what is there and how deep and wide and vast the area is and spreads information quickly. The dolphins can pick up on this communication as well. So can the whales and many other of the sensitive uh, species that are there. And they do spread the information through the animal and plant kingdom that lives in the oceans. Uh-huh. So I guess at one of the next channelings, we should invite the oceans to speak. Uh, if they will speak, that would be a wonderful thing for you. You would learn a lot how, about how they feel. They have been damaged recently by radiation and pollution. And they have also been damaged by over-harvesting of fish at points. So they feel very damaged at times and Mother Gaia comes to help them uh, feel more positive. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, that would be interesting to speak. Uh, at this point, I would like to uh, switch to the next speaker. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Uh, if, if I'm getting disconnected, um, I will connect in a few minutes. I'm running all the power on that device but I will connect to another device very uh, well so, so we have a but I might be able to, to make it in time so it's not it's not clear if it will happen so in any way uh, I would like to invite next speaker who would be uh, either uh, Steve Jobs or Jack Benvenist whoever is available and can speak very well thank you for speaking to us we are appreciative that you had listened and asked questions. We hope that you will be more mindful of the waters. They are lifeblood of your planet, as well with the oxygen thereof. We can, we, without us, you would be lost. We appreciate that. Uh uh, there is many of us who are very fond of water and feel great alignment with water. It is that the whole society is sick at the moment, so we we are disjointed in many ways, and our wishes don't come true uh, globally. So we need to globalize our ecological thinking, which is uh, the purpose of this conversation. One of very the purposes well. of this conversation. That is appreciated. I will go for now. Thank you very much.